been a number of NMN trials, but I think like the results have not been overwhelming in general. Like you said, like like 120 people, maybe across all the trials. Uh, and there's been some improvements, but not, not a great deal of improvement. Uh, so I, I guess, are you surprised by that? Why do you think maybe we haven't seen better results? Well, so um, two points. The first one is uh, we, the, the, uh, the clinical trials are by and large uh, very successful and they are benefit uh, benefits demonstrated in in these clinical trials. But I do agree that uh, the results are not as good as uh, uh, one might expect. There are a few a few reasons for that. The most important reason is none of these clinical trials look at the data points individually. And they won't report the elevation of NAD levels as a population or as a group. And they say, oh, you know, NAD is up. My suspicion is uh, the NAD levels are elevated in some individuals uh, but not in in others. And if you look at the, uh, the data as a group, you see an increase. But if you look at the clinical outcome, and uh, the improvement is not going to be there or not uh, uh, apparent for those individuals who don't have their NAD optimized. So the key concept that I'm pushing every time when I have a chance to speak is you want to have NAD levels optimized. Okay, you, I don't think you, you hear NAD optimization from another speaker so far. I want everyone, I want the world experts to talk about NAD optimization. That's very important because we only see clinical improvement when we get near NAD optimized Op optimize optimize uh, the level needs to be at least 40 micromole ideally in the 50s 60s 70s micromole that's when we see clear cut evidence of improvement for various functions and you want to look at the data on the individual level. If the NAD is not optimized, you are not going to see the improvement. If you combine them into a, into a group, you are going to diminish the clinical improvement, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to take a personalized approach to optimize the NAD level and to assess the clinical improvement. And we have done it in hundreds and hundreds of individuals. In the vast majority of people, we see very clear-cut clinical outcomes. So, uh, be because the sample size is too small, and if you have a few individuals, you know, say three, four individuals who are who did not get their NAD optimized, and uh, you analyze them together and the clinical outcome will kind of uh, uh, mask or disappear. And there was other than one recent clinical trial that has 20 individuals in one arm that has 20 individuals. All the other clinical trials have very few numbers and their dosage is kind of low. And for the vast majority of people for both NR and NMN, you need around a thousand milligrams of NMN or NR to get NAD into the optimum range. And, and that's not in everyone. Some people need, need less, other people need more. So you, in, in, in the clinical trials, they are testing for NMN or for NAD levels, but they don't look at the data individually. They don't look at at the data to assess what the levels have been optimized. So the clinical trials have to be conducted 
in a totally different way in order to demonstrate clinical outcomes. And we, we have the data. Again, we, you know, we, we need to find the time to get the data summarized and published. And the, the clinical outcome is unbelievable. We see tremendous improvement in energy levels, in uh, improvement of sleep, and also in uh, improvement of performance or recovery time uh, after exercise or uh, training. And we see improvement in mental clarity. We see, we even have two, two persons re reporting better vision. And that, that's one that I didn't expect. We have uh, reports on cardio, uh, cardiological improvements. I mean, the the benefits are wide ranging and it uh, vary from person to person, but we have seen clinical improvements uh, in the vast majority of people once the NAD level uh, is optimized. This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise, after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement, while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy, and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we're happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for magnesium breakthrough to modern health span audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code modern10. Thank you for your support. Okay, so talking about optimization. So if somebody wants to optimize at home, uh, so they could use your testing. So can you talk a little bit about uh, the tests that you have for, uh, this is intracellular NAD. Well, actually you have for both, but mostly intracellular. Yeah. Yeah. So I think intracellular NAD testing is easier and it's uh, more important than the circulating NAD uh, levels for, um, for most uh, people who are, who are using supplements. And... Um, it's a very easy test. Basically, you uh, you order the test on our website, and we can you know give it to you uh, the the uh, uh, the link, mm -hmm. and we we send you the test. You do a finger prick uh, at home, and you uh, send the blood back to our lab within one week, and we will. Uh, have your report in your Gfinity account, and you you have the uh, you, you have the data. Hopefully, you have a baseline. If you don't, if, if you are already taking supplements, that's okay. It will tell you uh, how your supplements worked for you. Uh, it doesn't have to be just a supplement; it can be IV, it can be injection. So, whatever NAD optimization strategy you you are using, you want to know whether your level. Uh, have been optimized. If you have not been using any NAD strategy, I suggest to get a baseline. So this way you can see how you know how uh, how much improvement you you have. And so anyone anyone can do it. Uh, and the test is available to um, to um, everyone uh, internationally, as long as your country allows you to ship blood samples uh, to the US. Uh, there's, otherwise, there's no uh, other limitations. Okay, excellent. And then I guess you should take another test kind of afterwards, um, after some period. I, I did, yeah, ideally you want to take a take a, a test before the supplementation and after the supplementation. But if you are taking uh, supplements already, uh, you, you want to know what your levels are. 
And depending on the results, after taking the uh, supplements, you may or may not need another test uh, very soon. Um, if your level is optimized, and you can continue what you are doing. If your level is not optimized, you want to change your strategy and, and then take another test uh, again. You only need two to four weeks uh, to get your NAD levels uh, up. So don't wait, wait for three months. Some people, you know, wait for six months to retest. Why, why you want to, you know, wait for three or six months and wasting, potentially wasting money on the supplements or other strategies that are not giving you the outcome. So test after four weeks. That's all you need. If it doesn't work for you after four weeks, there's no chance for it to work for you uh, for longer periods of time. It's just not going to work. Don't, don't wait. Get retesting quickly and fine tune your dosage or change your strategy. So it was, we did discuss this uh, last time briefly. So do you think NAD levels change during the day? And, and do you have any data that would show either that they do or that they don't? Well, we have some data on, on that question. And we do not see a significant change uh, during different uh, time period uh, of the day. Uh, if there's some change, uh, the the change is not significant enough, not big enough for anyone to worry about it. For the vast majority of people, you, your, your NAD levels are probably around 20 to uh, 30 micromole. You want to get your level to the 50s and 60s. You need to basically double, sometime, sometimes quadruple your current level. Why you worry about a ten percent variation? I mean, you, you know, right. you you have to look at the question relative to what uh, what you want to do. Mm. So I, to me, this is more a uh, scientific academic question than mm. a, a practical question. I mean, forget about it for most consumers. Let the scientists worry about it. <laughs> 